Erev Dov Chavrin, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very troubling things that we're seeing that is happening all throughout the Middle East. Uh, we already know that North Korea is a major issue that's happening there. Uh, now President Trump has also extended the travel ban to North Korean nationals traveling to the United States. That kind of lets me know that uh, perhaps we may be in an impending war with North Korea after hearing that bit of news there. But what really kind of bothered me was last night, I was actually up to like 4 a.m. this morning. Uh, after 2 a.m. I'd loaded up our teaching on the two witnesses there. Trust that was a blessing for you as well. Uh, but I was up, and while I was up around 3.30 this morning, I saw this article that you're seeing now on, on your uh, screen right now from uh, the Christian Science Monitor, UN Commission Finds Syria at Fault. For April gas attack. Now I picked this up actually on Twitter is where I'd gotten that from, uh, but it says investigators conclude the Syrian government did use chemical weapons in an area with civilians. This report comes as Syria, Russia, and Iran escalate fighting around the city of Deir Azor uh, in order to drive out the Islamic State militants. Now, uh, very troubling information coming out about this because you have to remember Russia wanted to be a part of the investigation on the alleged gas attack that was blamed on Bashar al-Assad and was not allowed to be a part of that whatsoever. They were not allowed to have any of their monitors there uh, to monitor this particular investigation. So you cannot help but wonder if this is not a skewed report. Now I wouldn't be saying that if we didn't have the former uh, parliament member, by the way, a Kurdish parliament member of the Turkish government there, which the U.S. is a very strong backer of the Kurdish people and the uh, newly forming Kurdistan over in Iraq and parts of Syria and part, well, definitely not part of Turkey. Erdogan is not going to stand for that. But uh, Aaron Erdem was the very parliament member that came out with the evidence indicting Western leaders for supplying the sarin gas and Ultimately, we discovered through a British uh, journalist that the sarin gas had come from Libya that was being used back in 2013 against the Syrian people. Then again, we had another uh, supposed gas attack by the Syrian government that there was no uh, proof, no uh, you know concrete proof that could say the Syrian government actually done so. In fact, the images coming out from the white helmets obviously were staged and doctors, experts were saying that they had to have been staged because here the white helmets were showing footages of children supposedly uh, struck by sarin gas and, and these white helmets using their bare hands on them when just a single drop of sarin gas could be fatal for even a grown human. Uh, so very interesting that the UN is now finding this, especially in light of the fact that the Syrian government has crossed the Euphrates River in uh, countering the red line the U.S. had drawn for the Syrian government not to cross the Euphrates River at Deir Ezzor, and of course Russia backing them all the way. Now the Russians have been fighting there with uh, the Syrian army there. They've been embedded there with them. They're special forces and so we had a report that came out today here on September 24th. Forgot to tell you guys it is September 24th, 2017. My apology. I'm trying to get better at that. Uh, Russian Lieutenant General killed in ISIS shelling near De Azort, Syria. This came out today uh, and no doubt a tremendous loss for the Russian people uh, in, in, in this battle against ISIS there in the region. But it's going to get even more troubling. Some of the information I'm about to share with you and that is if the information is 100% bona fide and accurate. Uh, I can't say for sure, but I saw this not on the Russian Insider originally, but this is aerial footage taken by the Russian government. The Kremlin released these photos here, and they are showing the vehicles here on the ground. These are U.S. Special Operation Forces that are working embedded with, believe it or not, ISIS, according to the claim by the Russian uh, government. It says, Breaking Russian presents satellite proof of U.S. troops collaborating with ISIS in Syria. Now, there again, it is alleged that is the case. I cannot say that that is for sure. We know that the Russians are blaming the U.S. for doing so, so we are giving you the Russian side of the story here. Uh, and there has been case after case that has come up here in the recent weeks and months inside of Syria where supposedly uh, unmarked 
helicopters have been coming in, buses as well, moving ISIS and their family members out. The Kurds have been uh, able to freely move into the area with ISIS. And uh, according to another report that I saw before coming on the air here, the Saudis have already told the ISIS militants to stand down and not to resist the Kurdish uh, advancement in the region there because of trying to create the Kurdistan in that region. So it's very troubling information that we're seeing here. And again, as you can see, lots of different satellite foot footage photos on here. And of course, it is being explained exactly what this is. Let me just quickly, uh, I'll pull up uh, the video. I actually did not see the footage of this video here that uh, they had placed on there. Uh, but it is saying the Russian Ministry of Defense just released several satellite images from ISIS-held areas showing coordinated actions of the U.S. military and ISIS forces in ISIS-held areas of Azor government uh, from the 8th and 12th of September. Now, I was aware of the dates on this. Now, of course, one thing that's troubling, though, is that it is blamed, according to the Russian Federation, it is blamed on ISIS for the shelling that killed their general. But if the U.S. is embedded amongst ISIS militants, this may be one reason why Russia and Syria, excuse me, Russia and the United States could easily end up going to blows. Uh, but anyway, this is really getting a situation that's starting to get out of hand there, and I'm very concerned about what could happen next there. According to Russian uh, Foreign Minister Sergey Lavrov, he has actually stated today, and this is on the Washington One Examiner, Russia Sergey Lavrov calls for a pullout of U.S. forces from Syria. Of course, he is speaking about after the defeat of ISIS, which Russia is saying that they have nearly just about been defeated. But then there comes another twist, and this is from Israel, and this is from uh, uh, Mr. Bennett, who is a Knesset member in Israel, and he is stating here, Israel must be ready to tackle Iran on its own. Now, I, I have to tell you, though, friends, I, I realize Iran is definitely a problem for the Israeli people. I agree with that. Hezbollah is as well. Uh, I've always said, stated that from the very beginning. I've never changed my opinion on that. Uh, but I've always said that I do not believe that the Syrian government has been a problem for the, for the Israeli people. Neither were the Kurds a problem for the, for the Israeli people. And I've stated that for, for, for the last couple of years, in fact, uh, even showing how that the Kurds had a very close relationship with the, with the, uh, the, the Israeli state there. And now we're starting to see that even more and more as the Kurds are flying Israeli flags going through the streets because Israel has recognized their independence already. But uh, Bennett, the Knesset member Bennett, the MP, uh, MK member there, is saying that Israel is going to have to go at this alone with Iran. Well, I don't really think that, it's, that Israel goes alone against Iran, but it could be part of a much larger plot. The United States may be getting ready to take down Bashar al-Assad after we saw this latest UN report here saying that Syria is at fault for the gassing of their people. And in light of that, Israel may be the one held responsible for taking down the Iranian targets. Now, of course, the U.S. has opened up a base inside of Israel with air defense capabilities there. I'd already stated to you how I believe that that is going to be used, that they no doubt are expecting a confrontation in the very near future. And so that the U.S. would be helping Israel to defend itself against an onslaught of rockets coming in from Iran. And believe me, Iran, unless there is a heavy uh, strike on Iran, we would be tremendously overwhelmed with rockets coming in from Iran, no doubt about it. Uh, but at the same time, I don't think Israel would be going at it alone. The Saudis, no doubt, would probably step up the pace as well to, to help Israel out in, in such a, a, an event as this. But if we're looking at the possibility that the U.S. may try to take out Bashar al-Assad, that would also involve Russia. So the United States would have their hands full with Russia. Israel, being an ally of Russia, would probably abstain from dealing with Russia, but rather would go after Hezbollah and the Iranians, with the Saudis no doubt backing up Israel in that type of a confrontation. Nonetheless, it's getting very, very tricky at what's going on in this part of the world there.